Hey everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial we are going to be looking at how to create an embossed um, effect in Octane and Blender. And uh, yeah, in this scene here we are going to be um, embossed, embossing the, um, the logo of the Louboutin uh, shoe. And uh, we're going to do it on the backside of this hill here. So this is just a very um, nice thing to know how to do probably. And, uh, and also uh, I think Octane does it amazing um, because the texture displacement node is a really cool node within Octane. And I'm going to show you later on um, why that is the case. So just uh, let's get uh, straight to the tutorial. And uh, yeah, so this is our scene and um, we have our shoe here and I've just set up a simple HDRI and uh, you can see just a light from the side here lighting up this inner side of uh, our shoe here. So the first thing that we want to do is that we want to unwrap where we are going to be placing our logo. So I'm going into the UV editor here and as you can see here we have all of our um, all of our bottom uh, bottom of the shoe here selected. So I'm going to be creating some seams because I want to uh, have more precise uh, yeah, uh, placement of our logo. So roughly, I don't know if this is like the correct way to do it, but I'm going to highlight this one, plus U and mark a seam. And then I'm also going to do it down here. Uh, select those and press U and mark seam. And then I will uh, select everything, press U and do an unwrap. So now you can see over here we have um, all of our like our shoes and, and yeah. Um, I think this looks quite weird. I'll just start to reset and maybe if I go into this perspective here it will be easier. Ah yeah, I've selected a uh, way too high. So let me just clear my seams and then I will just place a couple of new seams here. Uh, so mark seam here. So this is where in this field here is where our logo is going to be. So I'm uh, pressing A and select everything and then I pre press U again and unwrap. So now you can see over here we have our, uh, our shoe unwrapped. And uh, this part down here is where the logo is. So first of all uh, right now you can see that they're kind of distorted uh, because of how the shoe is acting. Um, so I first want to align all of these so they are like a perfect square and it's actually quite easy to do. So down here if I uh, select this UV select mode up here I can select these two here first and then I can press S and scale the U axis and press 0 and I will do it again here press S, Y and you know press uh, 0 again so that they are like a straight between each other. Here I want to press S and X and 0 and do the same over here S, X and 0. So yeah, so now we're going to be um, changing the UV select mode to this one up here, pressing A to select everything, holding down shift and then we're going to double select this one, right click and follow active quads. And when I zoom out you can see now we have a perfect UV uh, kind of sphere here. Um, I also uh, want to have this as the highest possible resolution. So I'm going to be creating a new um, UV image here. And we can see we already have the 4K up here and I'm just calling this UV um, or logo. Let's call it the logo uh, UV um, 4K. So we know what it is and press OK. And now we have a much bigger uh, place to, to uh, play with here. And then I'm going up to the uh, UV. And uh, oh, first of all, actually, I'm just going to be selecting this one here, pressing L, you will select everything. And then with the G, I'm going to move it out and then pressing L on this part here, moving it up and then just scaling it up just like this. And we might have to like rotate it so that it fits uh, better. We can um, just rotate it the, the minus 90 degrees here. So now it's, uh, it's easier to, to play with afterwards. So under the UV, I'm going to uh, 
oh yeah, on the image, I'm going to save it as an image. And I'm just going to save it on our desktop as a logo UV 4K image here. And then I'm also going to be um, going on the UV and I'm going to export the UV layout. And let's call this uh, logo uh, UV 4K layout. Oops, 4K layout and export layout to the desktop, just like this. And it just has to load just a bit. So yeah, so now we have successfully exported our UV map here and I'm going to open our UV um, map in Photoshop. And um, now you can see that we have our UV map here placed properly. Um, first of all, we are going to be using a black and white a hide image to show where we want the displacement. So everything that is white is going to be displaced and everything that is black is not going to be affected. So I'm going to add a, just a simple black color here to the backdrop, just pulling it down. You can still see our UV map here. And then I'm just going to drag in my logo and this can actually be everything, every logo that you want. And you can also create a text and make that white, but I've just, I have this um, proper uh, uh, Louis Vuitton uh, logo um, to use. So I'm going to drag this up a bit because I think I want it a bit higher, just like this. And um, I'm going to move it up above our UV map here. And I can actually just hide this one here now because we have, we have placed it um, within our um, UV sphere here. And the next cool thing, and remember to have it in like a, a like a smart object so you don't lose any quality. And then I'm actually going to uh, filter this one with a blur filter. And this was something that I saw from uh, Ross Mason. And I'm just going to be adding just a small radius of like 3%, just a tiny bit you can see here. I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, but we just add a bit of blur to the edges. So the um, fall off is not that hard. Um, because it's 3D, uh, this is not like, it would not normally be perfectly uh, shaped. So we need to be at a, a little bit of like, you can call it like a bell on the uh, on the displacement. So, so this is perfect. So right now I'm just going to uh, export this one um, and I'm going to just export it straight as a PNG to our desktop and replace our current uh, UV layout. So now I can go back into Blender. I can go back to our layout, layout settings here. And um, yeah, if I just scroll in a bit here, so it's easier to see, you can see now we need to go into the shader editor and we should choose this one and create a new material. Um, we can give this material sort of like a, a just like a black kind of tint to it, um, just to showcase it here. Uh, this, of course, needs to be the famous red Louboutin if this was a, like a real thing. Um, but yeah, so we need an image texture and uh, we can actually just drop in our newly created layout here. And uh, we are going to be adding this into the albedo just so you can see. And right now you can see that it's actually turning um, the opposite way. And this can be because we haven't like flipped it in the... Um, the correct way in the UV layout, but we can actually just go into our um, Photoshop file here and uh, we can select this part here and we can flip it horizontally and just hit OK. And this should do the trick, uh, I think. <laughs> Let's see what, what happens. So I'm going to export this again and replace the current file. And then if I go into the, um, oops, if I go into our Blender file again here, and I'll just going to replace this one. You can see now it fits perfectly. It's maybe a bit small if I scroll out, but I actually think this is this is actually okay just for this tutorial. You can always play around with the scale yourself and the placement and everything. Um, you can just you know under the in, in the Photoshop app you can just you know scale it um, depending on your UV filter. Actually, I'm th I think I'm just going to scale it a bit. Just like this, boom, hit export again. Oops, we actually need to, so this doesn't show up, we need to 
hit remove this one. We export it as a PNG file again and replace our current layout file. And when we go back here, we can just hit here and update it and it should update. You can see it got a little bit bigger. And now you might wonder why is it that we also have it down here? And that's because it's just repeating itself. So we can just under the border mode, we can just claim the value just like this. And now I actually think if I'm just hiding these parts here, we don't need these. Um, now you can see if I scroll in here and here it's nicely placed. So now we can start to use the texture displacement node. And I'm just going to uh, search for it. And this is the node that we're going to use. So I'm going to add the displacement node into our displacement here. And I'm going to add the texture here. And now when I scroll in, you can see that we already start to have some uh, displaced uh, embossment here and already looks quite cool. We don't need it in the albedo channel actually, so we can just unhide this one. And now you can see that we have this here with the nice kind of like, but I think it's a bit too much, so maybe 0 0.01. Uh, we can play around with the scale. Oops, that was the other way around. So 0 0.01, is that okay? Yeah, maybe that's okay, actually. You can also go uh, lower down in value. Under the level of detail, I'm going to be using a 4K because this is a 4K image. And uh, we are also under the displacement. We can choose follow smooth normals just to get a, a smoother like uh, roll off on our uh, displacement here. Um, so yeah, this is actually, we can also choose the Gaussian to like do a bit of filtering on it. But I think this actually looks quite nice. Though I would say, I think this is still a bit too harsh uh, on the edges. So we might actually do a bit more in bus, uh, a bit more Gaussian blur in Photoshop. So I'm just going back to my Photoshop file and I'm going into the Gaussian blur. And I actually think I'm going to add a value of, let me just show you here. I'm going to add a value of, let's say 10. So it looks quite as quite a lot, but I actually think this will look better. So we can just, you know, under the file export as, and we are going to be replacing it as we have done a lot before. So you can see there's a lot of tweaking with this displacement in Octane and it's just about getting like the best result possible. It just needs a bit of tweaking to your uh, specific needs. So now we can update it again and you should start to see, you can see here before we updated uh, these settings here, it's it's really harsh, uh, the embossment. This can also be the look that you're going after, but I want it to be softer. So now you can see it's a lot softer. If I scroll in here, you can see it's a lot softer on the edges here. It just looks way better. And I actually think if I just go down a bit on the effect here, maybe 0 0.0005, I think this is, oh, that's maybe a bit too much actually. Just 0 0.01, it's fine. We'll keep it at that, but you can play around with the strength under the height here. So yeah, so if I go a bit out here, you can see it actually looks really nice and it's perfectly um, uh, displaced in the, in our uh, on our object here. And the nice thing about uh, Octane, uh, the thing I mentioned in the beginning is that because we have this texture displacement with the level of detail, we actually don't need any like subdivisions on our plane. You could still achieve this effect with uh, without the without the many subdivisions. You can see here, I have a lot of subdivisions, but I know that in cycles, you also need this. But in Arctane, you really don't. Um, Arctane calculates it depending on the texture that you input. And then the level of detail here determines the, the quality of your uh, displacement. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I think that's pretty nice. I'll just lower this down a bit. So, so now we have like a really nice embossed effect here and yeah, so I think this is all for now. And uh, you can see how you can apply this to like, yeah, all sorts of uh, yeah things. You can also do it on glass. You can um, write a name and, and use that in Photoshop. But it all, it's all really 
uh, to do with like the black and white image with the height image and then uh, to use that as a as a like a mask and then the image texture rb rgb image within octane and then just a texture displacement node and then of course do the uv unwrapping uh, right um but yeah i just think octane does really really good so um so yeah this is our scene and uh, now you can go on to you know uh, texture the rest of the the shoe if that's what you wanted or yeah so um so I hope you learned uh, a bit about the text and displacement node in this um, video and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, the next tutorial. Uh, hopefully that will include a bit of like more like motion design again, just as I have done uh, before. Um, but I have been stuck with a lot of client work recently and uh, so yeah, these past tutorials has been quite, you know, simple and, and easy for me to do. And then hopefully I can do more advanced stuff um, soon again. So, um, but yeah, so uh, 